Hello everybody and welcome to episode 3 of Let's Learn Crusader Kings 2. Last time we talked about King Stenkel of Coolland and the character design view and all of this stuff and what it means and you know what it does. And from there we're actually going to go on to the council. And like I've said before the council is appointed from your courtiers which are all here. And you can invite them through uh, events. Let's go to the council. You can see right now, these are how much each character likes, which is important for how good they will do their job. You can see right here, he has 13 skill in diplomacy. And he's considered a masterful diplomat. 13 is quite high for a counsellor. And if I click a point now, it will give me a list of all my other courtiers in order of their diplomacy skill. So no one is better than him right now, so I don't need to worry about that. Likewise with Marshall, everything down, steward, everything is like that. Now... Each courtier can have three different things they can do, and I'm going to actually go through this first. This means they, if this is like this, they can't lead armies. So you don't really want your Chancellor to lead an army if he's not very good with it. Because if your Chancellor dies and he's got a high diplomacy skill, then you know who you're going to replace him with. And this is mostly important for the Marshal, because you probably want the Marshal to lead armies because he's going to be very, very strong, you know, with his marshal. But sometimes you don't want him to lead armies and you want him to train troops somewhere. So you have to, you know, forbid him. But right now I'm going to go through these three different things. And in the first video, I accidentally put improved diplomatic relations on between Norway. So I'm actually going to make a cut here and skip forward to when I can change that. After you pick an option for this, you're going to have to wait a year between you can before you can change it. So I'll be back in one second. Alright, so we're back, and if you've noticed, over that one year period, our current king died of pneumonia. So King Ingne is now the new king. I think he has no wife, so we'll sort that out later. But right now we'll go back to the council. Nothing has changed council-wise, except it's been a year past so we can change this. So we'll go through each of these different options and what they do. So the first one is improved diplomatic relations. And you can see here the possible outcomes. Improved relations with your, with Lord is 38.46% yearly. This is based on their score. And sabotaged relations with Lord, so 4.15%. If they hate you more, that sabotage will be much higher. So say, for instance, I have Eric of Munzer, which hates me by 71 points. So if I click on him, I can see that this is all his area. So if I find the place that he owns, he owns Upland. Then I can go, I want you to go improve relations with the uh, with this guy. And over the years, he may become to like me. The next one is fabricating claims. And fabricating a claim will, as I said before, a claim means you can go to war against it and have a reason. So say that we have no way to take skin right now. There's nothing we can do really uh, to get a claim on it. We can tell him to fabricate one. So over, it may take 10 years, it may take one. He will create a claim and say, yeah, we have a claim now. You can go fight skin and take it. So that is very useful, if, but should only be used as a last resort to get an area. We also have So Descent, which will, as you can see there, Vassal Liege Opinion Lowered. So if we do this to a Duke, who we don't quite want to uh, be part of a country, he will eventually hate his Lord, maybe declare independence and all that. But for now, we're going to do a improved diplomatic relations on this guy. And you see right there, he is physically on the board, and for a year we can't move him. Next we have the Marshal, who is right now my heir, and he can suppress revolts. We can see there, local revolt risk 15, minus 15%, and arrest chance plus 15%. So if, you have, if you've just taken over a fresh new area, and say they're all Danish and they hate you, then you want your guy to go in there and suppress some revolts. Train troops, he's going to increase your levy size by 37%, which is quite big, and reinforcement rate by 75%. And you can see there are two also possible outcomes yearly. And you also have research military tech, which is going to increase the rate of what your tech spreads at, which is very nice. Next we have the steward. He can collect taxes, which gives you a 50% tax modifier, 47.5% on his score. And sometimes you can get extra money by a thief, or sometimes you can be attacked as well. Oversea construction will make things be built quicker. And there's two possible outcomes there. Meets master builder will, you know, invite him. And research economy tech, which again is research spread. Now the spy master is very, very, very important. He can scheme. Now, 
Like I said before, there are plots in the game where people have plots to kill you and you can have plots to kill people. And you're not going to find out about them without a spy master. So you can see right there, if we put him somewhere, he's going to discourage vassals from associating with factions, so joining a factions, joining a faction, and also making plots. So we've put him, say, a um, very good example will be here. This guy hates me. Maybe he's plotting to kill me. If we put the spy master here over, you know, however long, he may discover that this guy has a plot to kill me. When I figure out he has a plot, I can legally jail him without everyone hating me and, you know, execute him, keep him in jail for whatever. I'm also going to put this guy to collect taxes and train troops. That seems like a very good idea right now. And next, and this guy can also build a spy network, which will, you put it somewhere, say we want to assassinate the king of Denmark because when he dies, we inherit Denmark. We put him here. Then he increases our assassination chance when we try and assassinate him. And he also has a chance of vicious rumours spreading. And next is our court chaplain. Proselytize. Now this is, if we're going to religion map mode, you can see here that this area is Norse as well as this area here. Now if I put my ca uh, court chaplain here, he will try and convert this place into a Catholic area. And eventually it will turn Catholic and then we won't have that, you know, religion inequality here so they will probably like me more you can see right now he's pagan it's a problem if you're catholic because they tend to hate you you can also research cultural tech and improve religious relations so like i said before if a, for a bishop to give taxes to you he has to like you more than the pope and if i input improve religious relations it's going to push this up and push this down so that's how you get uh, bishops to pay taxes to you one thing I didn't mention was a spy master can also study technology. So we'll send him to, if we send him to a uh, very high tech place at this time, say Constantinople, to study tech, you can see right there, he has a 21% chance yearly to discover a technology and send it back. If he's discovered, however, he can be jailed, which is not ideal. But that is essentially all that you all need to know, that you need to know about your council. Again, you can appoint them using this button here, which will show you everyone in your realm and order them in terms of uh, how good they are at the thing that you've picked. And that is just about everything. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.